Hello everybody. Okay, back again. I've tried to do this three times and every time the sound has gone really weird. So fingers crossed. Okay, I'm not doing one out of the jar because I've got another a question that somebody asked me to talk about or something they asked me to talk about. And so this is, I think, a brilliant one. It's how to go from expressing anger to processing anger and is there a difference? Anyone that knows me will love to know, will love the fact that I, they know I love to talk about anger because I had huge issues with anger. I was a rageaholic when I was younger, which basically means I was out of control. And this is kind of how it would go. I'd repress my anger because that's what I got taught growing up. Don't be angry. You're not allowed to be angry. I won't love you if you're angry. Repress, deny and avoid. And not family. This is from society. This is from teachers. This is from the world at large. It wasn't just family telling you that. Repress, deny and avoid. Well, I would do that. And then to the point, it's a bit like the ball under the water. You can't keep doing that. And all of a sudden it would like, it would just come out with all this energy behind it. And of course, once I started yelling, I couldn't seem to stop. That's why it's called rageaholic, because it's like you you kind of open up that can and all it shoots out with all that energy behind it, like a champagne cork. And well, you don't stop till you hit the ground, you're worn out and run out of words, or you're exhausted and you hit the floor and then you feel like crap because now you've just been out of control, shouting and yelling, hurting people, even though I probably wasn't conscious of that at the time, I was just reacting. So, Expressing is very different to processing. So expressing is, now we do it in different ways. Ex let's, uh, expressing is me shouting and yelling. That's my, a way of me expressing my anger. Another way I would have expressed it was to repress it. And then sometimes we become passive aggressive. It will come out sideways. Um, so we bang around the kitchen and you know people would know we're anger, but angry. But if we were asked someone, are you angry? No. I'm fine, as I continue to bash crang, clang in the kitchen, banging pots and pans and the such. Um, or I would just shut down, I wouldn't talk, or I would give people the silent treatment so they knew on no uncertain terms that I wasn't happy with their behaviours. Now, a lot of this is what we are, has been done to us. Um, so, And this is the way sometimes as parents, we will try and control our children because we are un. We are conditionally loving. I'll love you if you're a good boy. So if you act badly, I'm going to get mad, angry. I might shout and yell, or I might withdraw my love from you. And, and as a child, we feel abandoned, rejected, alone. And so we can't bear that because we need to survive. So I will do whatever it takes to kind of get mummy to love me. So I'm sorry, mummy. I'm sorry, mummy. Oh, I'll be a good boy, mummy. Oh, whatever it is. No, um, we will twist and turn and we'll adapt. So if if I'm the parent and this is a child and the child's been angry and I go, don't do that. That's not, you know, not nice. You're not allowed to be angry. So I'm telling him in no certain terms, repress, deny and avoid. So I'll pretend I'm not angry. I'll adapt. And so there's kind of two ways of expressing. Let's keep it simple because I'm sure there's a million ways of expressing, but some of us are more outwardly we'll shout and yell some of us are more inwardly now we did talk about this in another video if i'm more outwardly i might shout yell and abuse another i might even hit punch kick uh, be very aggressive um uh, some of us turn it inwards and actually i might self-harm i might even kill myself so that anger is being turned inward and now someone needs to be punished and that someone is me because i've repressed denied it and so some of us a bit like me we do both we repress it and then till the point where we can't repress it anymore and then it comes shooting out and so we can do both <laughs> we can repress it and express it um neither of which works well, well, actually, no, that's not true because it does work. Because if I get angry, you shut up and leave me alone. If I repress it, then you come and say sorry to me or you want to make it up to me. So I'm controlling you. So on some level, it does work, but it doesn't work ultimately because it's a form of um, manipulation, isn't it? You know, I'm trying to get my needs met. So if I get angry and lash out, you'll back off and leave me alone. Um, and we see this as parents, um, you know, all the time. So if we go when our kids get older generally if if you go in and go can you clean your room oh for god's sake i'm you know and they might react and when we go because it works then we'll back off and because we're trying to keep the peace and we don't want them upset and you know what i'm saying so it can work both ways so that's the difference between expressing and now we're going to 
to process because there is a difference obviously there's a difference because processing anger is a very different ball game your anger is i think the most healthiest feeling that you can feel and we have all been conditioned to not feel angry anger is a god-given feeling right anger is your body telling you something's not quite right now i might be being abused i might be being walked over i might be being taken advantage of and, and and something might be happening that's not fair and so your body will often produce anger as a feeling response and that's a good thing but you're, a lot of us don't listen. We just repress and I avoid because don't forget that's what we've been told. Those first, you know, first seven years you've been hypnotized, programmed, repressed and I avoid. I'm not allowed to be angry. And if I am angry, I'm a bad kid. I'm a bad girl, whatever, whatever. So a lot of us don't know how to process anger. We just know how to express it, which is repressed and I or express it through aggressive behavior, shouting and yelling. Processing is about you giving yourself some time and energy to really consider what this anger might be revealing to me. And that's something we don't because we react, we repress it. It's not like we're doing it on purpose, we're not. We're just reacting, press it, repress it or react out of it. So we can go from naught to 60 or we can repress and we don't even realise we're doing it. So it's not something we do consciously. It's something we've been taught to do to survive. I had to do this to survive because if I, I didn't survive, if I didn't you know, meet the needs of these godlike figures, then I'm dead. So don't forget, as a child, it's a survival technique, repressed and I'd avoid or, you know, some kids are very expressive. They can't seem to, you know, they do. They're very angry kids, you know, and I was probably one of those angry kids too. But I would do both. And a lot of us do. So processing is about giving yourself time and energy to say, what's going on with me? What's, what, what's this anger trying to say to me? And it's always, anger's the one emotion you have to listen to. And sometimes you have to take action. And this is such a big subject. And I thought, oh, 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 anyway, okay. Let's. So I listen to my anger. Well, I'm angry. Maybe, let's give you an example. Because I'm a chronic people pleaser. I was when I was growing up, which is a symptom of trauma. And so I couldn't say no, or I wouldn't say no. Um, I didn't feel like I could say no. So there wasn't a choice. It was like, oh, no, I have to say yes, because um, I want people to love and like me. And if they don't, then I'm dead. So I brought that childlike experience into the now and I'm, I'm um, reenacting it really in the now. And so so someone and this would this was this has happened to me. Someone would ring me up and I'd go, hello, how are you? Oh, do you want to go out for coffee? And I would instantly say yes. I would just say yes, because that's what I was programmed to do. Say yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, see you there. And before, or maybe when I'm there, I'd be thinking, why do I say yes? I've got a pile of washing, my kids need me to make dinner. Oh, there's a thousand things I need to do at home. And so what I've done is I've said yes with my head and no with my heart. And now I've betrayed myself and now I've, I'm going to betray them. Because when I rock up and I'm sitting there thinking, well, I should be at home. Um, why did I say yes? I didn't really want to say yes. It's going to come out sideways. It's going to come out maybe in comments, sarcastic comments, nasty digs. And this person might be thinking, and this has happened to me. And it's like, oh, what's wrong with you? I thought we were just having coffee. And so what happens is I'm a people pleaser. So I've said yes when I mean no. I've betrayed myself and now I'm betraying them because they're like, what's going on with her? She's not being very nice to me. Or Ooh, and maybe, you know, if I do that often enough, they won't trust me. So we can't trust people who are chronic people pleasers because it's like they'll say yes, even when they mean no. And somehow they'll either, uh, you know, a lot of people will just cancel at the last minute and you'll just keep doing that, you know, because actually you just said yes, because you didn't give yourself the moment. Do I really want to do this? Is it something I've got the energy for? I've got the time. Um, do I really want to do this? And a lot of the time we won't do that because we're just reacting and, and we've been taught to say yes. So that is when I'll get angry with me. I'm angry at me because I've said yes here, but I've meant no here. So I have betrayed myself. I'm not in alignment. My head and heart and body are not in alignment because you have to be in alignment and let your yes be yes, yes, yes. And your no be no, no, no. But I've been taught to be a people pleaser. And, um, you know, I can't I can't say no to anybody, you know, because I need them to love and like me. I literally grew up thinking everyone has to like and love me and I have to like and love everybody else. 
And it was a long while before I realized 20% of people won't like me and 20% of people I won't like. And I had to give myself permission to do that because I was, this is probably why I did, I said yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm being asked to go to coffee with someone I actually don't really like, but I've been taught, no, 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 just, you know, um, you have to like everybody and everybody has to like you and you have to please them. So acknowledging what's happening within me. Oh, I'm angry. I'm angry at myself because I keep saying yes when I mean no. Um, <clears throat> I'm angry because that person keeps asking me to lend 20 bucks and then they never pay me back. Um, I'm angry because I've got all this resentment because I'm blaming someone for something they might have done a year or 10 years, 20 years ago, and I'm still holding on to that anger. And so um, I'm not processing it. I'm just holding it. And guess what? When you have an emotion, it compounds. It doesn't just go away. Or We can compartmentalize it, but that's not healthy sometimes. It's not a bad tool, but it doesn't always help um, because it builds up. And this is why we get uh, rage, trauma, rage, because we've got all this unprocessed trauma and anger. And cool, someone says something over here and we go off our rocker. It's like the camel that broke the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So expressing anger is very different to processing anger. Okay. And I often say the opposite of anger is assertiveness because a lot of us haven't been allowed to speak our minds, say what we want, say no to things. Um, a lot of us struggle to be assertive, to have a voice, to feel like we are worthy, to have healthy boundaries. I mean, this is all about, there's lots of other things that it overlaps with here, isn't it? Um, being able to process anger. And for me, it's like if I've got a lot of stored anger that I carried through life, which is what I did, um, and repress, repress, and then someone does something over here and triggers it, and phew, I'm, I'm expressing it in a way that's not helpful and um, scaring everybody to death. And so processing is hugely different to expressing. Now, when I work with clients, I because I work with anger, I know I, you, anger management doesn't really help. You have to heal, heal a part of us. Um, and you have every right to feel anger. Anger for me is the most wonderful feeling of all. And I call my rageaholism my superpower and the reason i call it that because the depth i can feel my rage is the depth that i can feel my joy now i want to feel joy so on the other side of that is i want to feel that anger and rage and a lot of people don't realize that so when you repress anger you repress everything else you repress all the other you can't just you can't just repress one kind of emotion emotions are all the same we just call them names like anger and joy but actually they're all the same we just call them good and bad and so acknowledging knowing yourself understanding what you might be angry at why you might be angry maybe you were controlled growing up maybe you were abused maybe you were conditioned to believe a bit like i was that i have to like everyone and do what everyone wants me to do because that's how we stayed safe and so Expressing can look scary in terms of somebody expressing it outwardly. Actually scary if someone expresses it inwardly because they become stonewallers, you know, they just sort of, or they might become contemptuous. So they'll do it in a very sort of passive aggressive way. So we all know people that sort of go like this, oh, you know, oh. that's actually contempt. And a lot of passive aggressive will show their disdain by going, oh, it's like they bat their eyes to the ceiling. And in fact, in terms of couple therapy, it's one of the biggest indicators of um, an unhealthy relationship. Uh, because I don't know about you, but if you sit in front of someone and express your truth and just they go, as if like, what's the message you're receiving? It doesn't work well. And so there's lots of way we express it through our body language, even though we might not mean to. It will come out. It will come out. You, you just watch someone long enough, you'll see their anger come out. Um, either in repressed ways or very obvious ways and that's easier if they're obviously angry um, and being able to process that anger in a healthy safe environment is key now I didn't get a lot of support around this the message I was told anger's not okay and you should, it, it's it's not it's it's not okay and you shouldn't be doing it and because I was expressing it a lot 
in a very volatile way, then I, this is what happened to me. I'd express it and then I would hate myself with a passion and I'm, I'd shut it all back down and I'd go around in a circle. And this is a cycle of abuse because I'd be okay for a little while until, you know, I'd pressed it, repressed it long enough and then the camel, the straw, and then I'd express it and then I'd lash out irrationally, um, react, yell, shout, scream, um, go on and on until I was worn out and then I'd be exhausted and then I'd, oh God, and then I'd hate myself and then it would, cycle would go on. I mean... And this is what the cycle of abuse is. And it's it's about realizing I would judge myself really harshly. I would treat myself really badly. Um, I would hate myself for acting in a way that I didn't want to act, but I felt like I had no control over the what I did or how I behaved. And that's a scary thing. I was terrified of my own rage and anger. So what did I want to do? I wanted to reject it. But you can't do that. You can't just reject a part of yourself because it, it wasn't just, it, see this rage, there was, there was a reason that I developed this. There was, um, it wasn't for nothing and I hadn't validated that. And so hopefully you go to see a good therapist who helps you realize that actually you're really angry, maybe at your parents, maybe at the bullies, maybe at the teacher, maybe at your partner, maybe at the world, maybe at... You know, it depends what environments you are. Maybe if you're in a church or in NA or AA or in the army or in the, you know, the community centre. It could be anyone and anything. Um, a lot of it does start, I think, in the first seven years. If you've not really had what you needed in those years, you could be very angry at those people because, well, if it wasn't for them, I'd, I'd be better or I'd feel better about myself or, you know, blah, blah, blah. So processing anger is key to health and well-being and Finding a safe person to do it with is key. Being able to express it, give it a voice, as I call it, have your day in court, um, which we talked about a little bit in um, the forgiveness one. And so a lot of these will overlap onto each other. So yes, there's a very big difference between expressing, because I think expressing feels out of control. It feels like a reaction, whereas processing is a lot more mindful. It's a lot more loving. It's a lot more compassionate. It's about attempting to understand um, and if you think about if someone's angry with you and you just run away or you know you shut them down or you lash back at them probably nothing's going to change but if you actually said to someone oh you're, you're really angry what's going on what's happened to make you feel this way and then you start to understand why the anger might be there and what's happening to this person and you know, maybe it's usually pain and suffering and struggle. Um, it's usually because they haven't been heard or understood or listened to or validated or been able to express their anger um, in a way that's going to be helpful. On, and, and that means process it in a way that's going to be healing. And this is a big deal. I mean, I, I must admit, all through my therapy, all through my, you know, I've done an undergraduate and a postgraduate and a master's and I don't think anyone really addressed anger rage and resentment and I had to kind of find out the hard way and it's great because now I can help clients work through that stuff um because it, it felt awful I felt out of control miserable hating on myself nothing good happened um and I'd be all right for a while and then it'd happen again and it is a cycle and so yes expressing yeah, it doesn't always work. Um, and, and to be able to process, understand it, listen to it, give it a voice if you have to. Um, and there's various ways of doing that in a very practical sense because I'm a very practical person. So um, giving yourself that day in court and, you know, there's a in, in the court system, people have a, a victim statement where they get to actually have a voice and tell the person how what they did impacted on them and, you know, how it left them. And I think that's really important. So that's what I do with clients. Um, I give them a way of processing in a healing way where they can learn to give up their right to hold on to that resentment and ultimately give up their right to punish them. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? Anyway, I hope that made sense. I hope that was um, something that is helpful. Please, please respond if you think that was confusing or something you didn't understand or you didn't get where I was coming from. And that's okay. You don't have to. 
Um, but listen with the ears of your heart. Um, if it resonates, then take it. If it doesn't, don't. But if you, um, yeah, you like it, please just like, subscribe, share it with someone that maybe you feel you know is struggling with anger, um, repressed anger or outwardly angry. Um, it's not an easy one. And I think um, a lot of people struggle to really know where to go with that and what to do with it. But anyway, I hope that's helpful. Thank you for listening and I'll say goodbye.